One of the most difficult things to do when you're building a composite where you take a background and a subject and you put them together is creating realistic or true color matching. Oftentimes our background comes from a different place than our subject and it's up to us as digital artists to make it feel like they fit together even though the viewer is going to know that seemingly they don't but if you make the color match it'll feel like they do. I recently built this composite of my son William after we did our Rudis family Christmas card and he struck this amazing pose and I just couldn't help myself to try and make him look like a lumberjack next to a log cabin out in the woods. It was a lot of fun to build and right now F64 Elite members are watching a case study on how this whole composite was built. But what I want to show you today is how to color match your background to your subject or your subject to your background. And no matter what type of compositing you're doing, this is going to be a trick that you're going to want to have up your sleeve. As you can see here, this is the composite that was built and our subject doesn't quite match the background. And the background is a gorgeous stock image that I got off of Adobe stock. I also added this nice little cabin here to make it feel like his homestead and an ax and a stump over there. So it looks like he just finished a hard day's work. But how do we get the colors to match the background and the foreground? Well, I'm going to show you uh, one of the older ways that I used to do this and compare this to a newer way that I've just kind of started dabbling in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab our background layer and I'm going to duplicate it by pressing command or control J. What I'm essentially going to do here is try to use the colors in our background layer to match them with our subject. What I need to do on this blur background copy that I have here is go to filter, go to blur, and then go to average blur. What that's essentially going to do is it's going to take all of the colors in the image and blend them together. So it's basically saying all the colors that we have in this background are all going to be mixed into the same pot. Imagine a bunch of crayons, all that color thrown into a pot and melted together. And that's the color that we're going to get when we're done. Now, what I would do in the past is I would take this color and I would move it up to the top. So it's above my subject. And then I press Alt or Option to clip it into my subject. That's a clipping mask that says that this color can only go into the area that is directly below it. Now, to make it feel like it fit, I would change this to the color blend mode. And then I would slowly come in here and drop the opacity until it felt like our subject matched the background. Now, another way to do this is to essentially take that color. So let's go ahead and make the opacity all the way up. And let's go ahead and change this to the normal blend mode. Now, there is some dodging and burning and some finishing steps that are done on this. Let me turn all that stuff off. Another way to do this is to grab your foreground color, click on the color that we have made or blended together, press OK. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, I'm sampling that because what I want to do now is put a solid color overlay on top of it and use that color. Now, the reason why you would use a solid color overlay instead of a color fill is that after you get this set up to say something like the color blend mode and you drop that fill again, it's the same color, but now what we get to do is say, well, you know, the colors really don't feel like they match. There's a lot more saturation in that background. So I could double click on this color. And while I'm still within the color, I could say, move this up here and just kind of add a little bit more of the highest form of saturation for that color. So we go from a brownish color more towards an orangish color, and that helps give us a better color grading for our subject. Now, that's the manual way to do it. Uh, we're basically taking the color of the background, we blend it together, we get the mix of what that color would be, we sample that color so that we can get the highest form of saturation of it if we needed to, or a lesser form of saturation if we needed to given the background that we're working on. Now, recently, Photoshop has added a Nero filter, which is as they describe based off of artificial intelligence. In the Nero filters, we have something called Harmonize. I haven't really found a place for it in my landscape workflow, but in my compositing workflow, it may have a place. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to use the Harmonize filter. And to make this work, we need to click on the object that we want to harmonize. So I want the subject, William to look like the background. So I need to start with William. I need to click on that layer. So I need to click on this layer of him. Then I'm going to go to filter, go to Nero filters. And in the Nero filters, it's going to be in the beta section here and it's called harmonization. So I'm going to click that and just turn it on. You're going to see here, it says reference image. What do we want our subject to look like? Well, we want our subject to look like our background. So in the select layer, I'm going to go down to the blurred background. I can make them look like the cabin if I wanted to. Okay. Now, 
it's going to run its algorithm. It's going to do its thing. And when it's done, it gives us what it thinks the harmonization of the background and the subject should look like. It's not the best, but it's a good starting point. Most AI isn't even a good starting point, in my personal opinion, for what I would call artistic effects. But this actually isn't that bad. So for something like this, we might need to just drop the brightness a little bit and then maybe increase the color in the reds a little bit and maybe increase the yellows a little bit to match that background and maybe add a slight hint of magenta to that since our uh, background color is more of a warmer color and then maybe a little bit more yellow and a little bit more red. And you start to see that as I move these sliders here, I'm changing the way the harmonization is affecting the subject. Here, he looks like he's a zombie if we add too much cyan, but it's not that bad when we add red. If we add too much green, he'll probably definitely look like a zombie. So let's keep that more closer to the magenta. Uh, and now maybe drop the brightness just a little bit more, okay? And once I've, I feel like I have it good, I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. Now the question is, did this harmonization do us any better? Well, I don't really like what the AI developed for us because if we look at this, we have lost a lot of the definition in our shadows and the shadows are what create our subjects facial expression. We also have an increase in brightness, but the color isn't too bad. So what do we do with that? Well, the Nero filter by itself probably isn't that great, but if we use something like the color blend mode, that's gonna strip out the, not saturation, the color blend mode, let me scroll over that. That's going to strip out the luminance information that is in that harmonization and only give us the color data. So I'll press color. Now it does look like we have a, a, a better combination of color happening here than we did initially, but it doesn't look the best. So I'm gonna drop the opacity a little bit. And in this case, let's see what we have here that doesn't look too bad. Let me go ahead and also put our color fill in between here and see if it's somewhere like a good blend between both. And honestly, it does feel like there's a good blend between both if we use the manual method plus the harmonization method. Look at the way the colors are a little bit more rich. Now, at first, I was thinking to myself, I don't really need to go too far outside of this color fill, the manual method, because it looks really good. But then we add the Nero filter there, we see we get these reds back, okay? So there's an algorithm that's happening there where it's probably assessing colors and making sure that the, the most prominent color in the foreground object, which would be the subject here, uh, doesn't get lost in the translation between that, where we don't really have that kind of control over uh, the color fill with the blend mode, unless we start using creative masking and stuff. And in this case, a little bit of creative masking will probably go a long way. If I double click on our layer four here with this harmonization, using blend if, I might wanna protect the underlying layers highlight areas because this face looks like it's getting some tone compression. So I'll move this down like this and then alt or option to split and feather that down into our mid-tone areas. Now I could also, instead of using blend if, I could put a mask on here and I could brush with my brush tool. I'll make my brush tool a little bit bigger because it's rather small here. And then just brush with black on that um, color overlay that we have here. And that will get some of that facial feature stuff back as well. Now let's go ahead and add our other layers here to see if our finishing touches look good after we've done that. And I think they do. That looks pretty good. Now that was using the harmonize Nero filter to harmonize the subject with the background. There might be some cases where you want the background to feel like the foreground or the subject. So let's do that. I'm going to make another copy of this. Just go into my history palette and duplicate these layers. I'm going to pull this up to the top. I'm going to delete this layer and I'm going to delete this layer because we don't need this for this demonstration. I'll turn off my finishing touches. I'll turn off uh, the accent stump over there and just leave it with this copy of William. We can even turn off this gradient here as well. So the idea here is I want our background to appear more like the foreground or the subject. Let's say we've got the lighting and the color beautiful in our subject and we don't want that subject to lose those colors or that tonal value, we want the background to adopt it. What we would do here is we would click on the blur for our background layer, go to filter, go to Nero filters. In the Nero filters, we're gonna turn on harmonization. We're gonna select the layer that we want. What's the reference image? Well, the reference image is our subject. So we'll click on that. It's gonna take an analysis of what the subject looks like. And if you look at what it's doing to our image in the background, it does appear as if it's taking on some of those darker qualities and reducing the amount of yellow that's in there. 
Now we might need to do a little bit of work here because there's a little bit of red here that we might want back. So we might increase the red a little bit in that background there just to get a little bit more of that red from his shirt. And it looks like the brightness is dulling down our whites back there, which actually creates something called tone compression. And it doesn't look good. Again, like I said about AI, sometimes it can be a good starting point, but we also have to understand the elements of color and light and how they work in an image. In this case, this AI or artificial intelligence is making our whites look like they should be more of a gray, which is creating tone compression, which would be a technical flaw. So watch those things. We'll increase the brightness to help protect that. And it looks like it does a pretty darn good job there. Might be a little bit too much still, so we'll increase that a little bit more. Now, once we press OK, it's going to output that as a different layer on top of that. Now, look at the before and the after here. Before, it's very bright, it's very yellow, it's very orange, uplifting. Well, that's what we wanted on our subject in the example before. But now, we want our background to appear more like our subject, and the Harmonize filter can do a pretty decent job for that. Now, if we don't want to lose our luminance values, again, we can change that to the color blend mode, and we will not lose the luminance values that are back there. It will help preserve that white and black that is underneath the color that is happening on this layer. So here's the difference. Background matched to subject or subject matched to background. In this case, I definitely prefer the subject matched to the background because I felt like it made a much better composite at the end of the day. As I said before at the beginning of this tutorial, F64 Elite members are watching a course right now. I call them case studies actually, where they get to watch me build this entire composite from scratch, from the very beginning, I talk about some of the things that went into the portrait shoot, the lighting setup, and then I talk about how I'm going to match the lighting of the background with all of the elements that I found on Adobe Stock. It's a really great way to watch an artist work through a composite to help you with compositing ideas as well. I know in the past I've made some polarizing comments about artificial intelligence being used with our workflow, and I still feel very much the same way. As you see in this tutorial, I am using artificial intelligence to help color grade the image. However, there's still the use of blend modes. There's still the use of opacity. I still need to use my artistic judgment to take the starting point that was given to me by AI to use it in my workflow. At this point, I do not feel that artificial intelligence is where it needs to be to make artistic judgment for us. We still need the artist's mind to create our work. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I take very difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly easy so that you can use them in your workflow today.